This is a Friday Night Funkin' Controversy Iceberg. I made this iceberg. The way it works is that this iceberg has 5 layers, containing around 40 different subjects, with each different subject getting more and more obscure as we go down. So let's go down this iceberg layer by layer, and look into some of these controversies. I've already talked about some of these topics, so I recommend you check out my videos on those as well. There's a lot to talk about, so I can't go too deep into each different topic, so I suggest you go investigate for yourself. Also. There are some things on this iceberg that I don't talk about for the sake of brevity. As always, don't hate on anyone mentioned in this video. The purpose of this video is to compile many incidences in this community in a single place, not to inspire harassment of any kind. Comment your thoughts below and let me know if I missed any controversies, or if I got anything wrong. With that being said, let's get into it. Amor Ultra Amor Ultra was the director of the Bob and Bosip mod. He got into big trouble for speaking privately with a then-known groomer, AetherDX, and probably posted a very vague apology about it. However, Amor was called out for a lot more after he was placed in the spotlight. There were accusations by his colleagues that he overworked and underpaid his mod team, which were mostly disproven, but there were also other allegations surrounding Amor making and tweeting NSFW art of himself and his two friends, Blue Sky and Mini Shui, the last of whom was a minor. Blue states that he and Mini consented to the art being made, but were unaware that Amor was going to post it on social media. So even if there's no legal argument to be made here, it's still disrespectful and humiliating to post NSFW art of your own friends on social media without their consent. There were also allegations that Amor pressured miners to make NSFW art in order to gain privileges on his Discord server, as well as there being some evidence of him trying to exploit a 15 year old. Amor has not interacted with anyone on any social media since the end of 2021. FNF Kickstarter after the release of the Vanilla Week 7, the Friday Night Funkin' devs began a Kickstarter to fund the full release of the game. The baseline goal was $60,000, but the community somehow managed to raise over $2.2 million, meaning that a whole ton of bonus stretch goals would be added to the game, such as fully animated cutscenes, online multiplayer, and something called Erect Difficulty. However, a lot of people have been complaining that the game is taking too long to come out, and a lot of people claim, jokingly or not, that the devs took the $2 million and ran away with it to buy crack or something. A core issue was the lack of communication, as the devs were not effectively letting the community know how the game development was going. This has been somewhat rectified by the fact that they recently created a blog where they post weekly updates on the progress of the game. Midfight Masses Midfight Masses was a mod developed by Doki Doodles, Mike Gino, and Corral Anomal. It was one of the first OC mods, but was heavily criticised by the community due to the subpar charting which may have been a result of a bad engine, to the point of Doki Doodles receiving death threats and impersonations. On April Fools of 2021, the mod was updated to add a song called Casanova, which had obscenely terrible charting as a jab at the people who made fun of the original mod's chart. However, this only made the critics more aggressive. After some time, Doki Doodles announced that she was leaving the community. Midfight Masses has since received a lot of fan support due to the likability of the characters, resulting in fan mods like MFM Deluxe or MFM HD. Revy Revy was the owner of the Faker.exe OC in the Sonic.exe mod and was also the director for some time. The situation primarily revolved around allegations that Revy groomed two people on Discord and harassed another, as well as being an unethical director of the Sonic.exe mod who would manipulate her team against other people. This controversy sparked a massive war in the FNF community over whether or not Revy was innocent, with new evidence coming to light supporting both sides of the argument. People who tried to defend Revy were most heavily criticised, with certain advocates like GameReal bearing the brunt of the harassment. As of now, common consensus is that the situation was fabricated or blown out of proportion by her former work colleagues such as mod developer Rightburst. Sky the Sky Mod was a mod made by BB Panzu, who was based off a real girl named BF's Wife Forever. The mod was ultimately deleted due to a variety of controversial incidents, most prominently due to people making Rule 34 art of Sky, despite the person she was based off only being 13 years old. Furthermore, there was an incident where people raided the official Sky Mod Discord server to spam R34 and Gore. Additionally, there have been accusations that BF's Wife Forever, Sky's inspiration, 
may have instigated this Discord raid, as well as allegations that she herself has done some very strange things, such as once urinating while live streaming. Despite everything, Sky has remained a fairly popular character in the community. Clickbait FNF Ads This is a pretty basic one. If you've watched any FNF YouTube videos, chances are that you've seen some of these grossly inappropriate ads. They can feature vanilla or mod characters, but don't relate to FNF in the slightest. Instead, the ads seem to advertise irrelevant quiz or flash game websites. Also, a lot of these ads also feature censored NSFW art, which is funny because I thought YouTube hates sexual content. Oh well, I guess if YouTube is making money from it, then that's the exception. Also, the fact that these ads are fairly distasteful, seeing as a majority of the fandom are kids to younger teens. But I've taken too long talking about this topic, so let's move on. Sock.clip and Homsky Sock.clip was the original developer who made the Verse Witty mod. On a livestream, she made some off-topic remarks about how the final phase of the Verse Tabby mod plagiarized the designs of Witty's ballistic form, which caused many of her fans to harass Tabby mod dev Homsky. Sock.clip eventually made an Instagram post about how what she did was wrong, deleting the Witty mod and leaving the community, with the Date Week mod being made as a farewell to Witty. However, she eventually returned to the fandom in early 2022 and released the Verse Witty Definitive Edition. Homsky later left the community for an unrelated reason. Agotti Verse Agotti was a very popular mod about an OC, obviously named Agotti. The devs even made an official Agotti Twitter account, run by the person who owned the OC, Evan, roleplaying as Agotti. However, he came under fire for blatant anti-LGBT behaviour, namely saying Frick Pride Month and claiming that it's just an excuse to complain about bigots. He also apparently allowed someone named Squizzle Dizzle, a person thought to be a transphobe at the time, onto a Minecraft server and brushed it off as people being sensitive when he was confronted about it. Evan later made a twit longer where he attempted to justify his actions by saying that he only acted the way he did because he got too absorbed into role-playing as a gotti. He eventually transferred ownership of the Agotti mod to fellow modder Sugar Ratio, who would later turn it into the FNF Entity mod. Game Banana Attacked In early September of 2021, Game Banana, one of the main forums where FNF mods are uploaded, was attacked by a rogue moderator named Patrick Grady, who proceeded to delete many popular FNF mods from the website. At the same time, a hacker known as Arch proceeded to hijack and ban many Game Banana accounts of some FNF modders. Game Banana managed to get the situation under control and implemented a number of measures to ensure a situation like this didn't occur again. However, the damage was already done and a lot of people stopped trusting Game Banana to instead turn to alternatives like Game Jolt. Speed. Speed was a commentary YouTuber who made a ton of FNF content, mostly covering individual controversies in short videos. He often used NSFW clickbait thumbnails and titles, spread a vast amount of misinformation, and would often start arguments with other people in the FNF community, like BB Panzu or Kolsan, simply so he could farm this made-up drama for content. Dear FNF Twitter, I do not value your opinion, and I never will. You can't harass me into leaving like you did with Witty, Midfight Masses, Cade Dev, and numerous others. I guess the toxic side of Friday Night Funkin' Twitter saw this as some sort of challenge to them, being like, oh, hell no, he doesn't think he can get harassed out of here? Well, let's go harass him. <laughs> He's also just a smug prick who likes to insult the community at every opportunity he can, while ironically milking it for all it's worth. He's also had a lot of beef with other YouTubers like Harley TBS and Miss ZZ, but luckily those incidences aren't related to FNF, so I don't have to talk about them. Speed eventually stopped posting commentary videos and started posting these weird R34 roleplay videos about FNF mods, and then eventually stopped posting videos at all. Retrospector Retrospector is a musician YouTuber who created the Verse Retrospector FNF mod where the player battles against seven of his OCs, representing the seven deadly sins. The original release of the mod only contained Retrospector, representing Wrath, but it teased another character, Sakaroma, who represented Lust. A lot of people ended up complaining about Sakaroma's oversexualization, claiming that FNF is a kid's game and should not contain this type of inappropriate content, despite the fact that A. Sakaroma is the embodiment of Lust, and B. FNF is not a kid's game. 
the mod ended up getting restricted on Game Banana, to which Retrospector responded by saying he would push the boundaries of Sakuroma's week purely to spite the people who thought it was too sexual. He would later post on Twitter stating that he would distance himself from the larger FNF community and mostly focus on his own mods and his friends' mods. The first Retrospector mod is currently unfinished, with no signs of it being ever completed. Slash v slash tan. The slash v slash tan mod was an FNF mod made by 4chan users, for 4chan users, inspired by 4chan users. Due to said 4chan inspired elements, there was a lot of disagreement about the contents of the mod. In particular, the fact that one of the songs was named after the n-word, and the existence of a sexual shock comic being hidden in the game files. There were also plenty of allegations that the slash v slash mod contained malware, which allowed the mod devs to hack into computers of people who downloaded the mod. However, there was almost no evidence of malware whatsoever. Most of the so-called proof of the malware was the fact that BB Panzu had been hacked around the same time as the slash v slash mod gained popularity. However, BB Panzu had never downloaded the mod. This hack was later revealed to have been performed by someone named Arch, who was not affiliated with the slash v slash mod. Hura the Antagonist Hura the Antagonist was a musician for the Tales Gets Trolled mod and a self-admitted pet. She used to be a member of the Undertale SoundCloud community before being forced out in 2020 due to being exposed for her orientation. Hura managed to migrate to the FNF community and remained until mid-February 2022 when information about her being a self-admitted resurfaced. She claimed that people were spreading misinformation about her not going to therapy, about her disturbing thoughts when she had actually been seeking help, and eventually deactivated her Twitter account and left the TGT team. Echo Locator, the then owner of the Tales Gets Trolled mod, ended up transferring the mod ownership to Huda due to stress. In early March 2023, Huda created a new Twitter account where she clears up a bunch of remaining issues surrounding her tendencies. Blue Skies Blue Skies was a graphic designer who is most known in the FNF community for his work on the Bob and Bosip mod, as well as being close friends with the More Ultra at the time. In early 2022, Blue was accused by fellow Bob and Bosip team member Sibo of a multitude of misdemeanors, from being generally unpleasant in voice calls, to plagiarizing geometry dash graphics, to being culpable in the More Ultra controversy, to engaging in NSFW interactions with minors over social media. Blue Skies responded to almost all of Sibo's claims with varying degrees of success. A few months passed while Blue went on a hiatus from social media and seek therapy, before he returned with a proper apology where he individually addresses every person who was involved with the controversy, which included me for some reason. Thanks, I guess. If you want a more comprehensive analysis of the situation, I suggest you just check out that video I made a while ago, because it still holds up fairly well. AetherDX and JesterFrog. These two incidents are unrelated, but are fairly similar to one another, which is why I decided to lump them together. AetherDX was a coder for mods like Bob and Bosip and Starlight Mayhem, but in August 2021, she was exposed for grooming others in the community. The main allegations were made by someone named Kalionic, who in a Google Doc details being manipulated by Aether while in a relationship with them. Of lesser severity was Aether abusing her powers as a mod programmer to control the development of certain mods, as testified by the leader of the Verse Cyrix mod, Matt. Jesterfrog was a coder who worked on mods like Sonic.exe, but in April 2022, she was exposed for trying to sexually coerce a 14 to 15 year old. These allegations were made by an anonymous person, but there is plenty of evidence showing Jester trying to convince the victim to perform sexual acts or send sexual images and videos over Discord DMs, despite both of them being minors at the time. Last time I checked, any minor, no matter if over the age of consent, cannot take sexually explicit photographs of themselves, let alone actually send them to other people. Funnily enough, both of these people actually ended up in other people's controversies. In December of 2021, it was found out that AetherDX had been interacting with a more ultra, and in August of 2022, it was found that Jester Frog had been interacting with another Sonic.exe modder, Avery. Nix the Shield Nix the Shield is a musician who is most known for making Undertale music for fan content. 
as well as making the X event FNF mod. He came under fire after openly criticizing FNF dev Ninja Muffin for apparently being a racist and a Nazi. He also hates Newgrounds for allowing, tolerating, and embracing fricked up content and behavior. Inexplicably, he was also very vocal about his hatred for the FNF community, saying that he doesn't enjoy making FNF YouTube videos, but only does so because he gets a lot of views from them. This garnered a lot of criticism with people calling him entitled, because he talked a lot about hating the game, its creators, and the community, yet also continued making FNF YouTube videos for profit. Also, Ninja Muffin called Nyx a parasite for milking FNF for views and for having an ignorant perspective on Newgrounds. From what I can tell, everyone has moved on from this situation, with Nyx largely abandoning FNF content and focusing on Undertale fan songs. Kolsan's Bad Tweets Kolsan was the lead developer of the FNF HD mod, and is known for being volatile and getting hyper-aggressive on social media. There was a particular incident when a random person on Twitter said that Kolsan's mod sucked ass, to which Kolsan stated that the person had other problems to worry about, referring to the fact that this person had cancer and assumed that they were on their deathbed. Some people, like fellow modder Civil, attempted to defend Kolsan, but for the most part were heavily against him. Eventually, Kolsan apologized and claimed to have discussed privately with the person he insulted. Everywhere at the End of Funk Everywhere at the End of Funk is a mod inspired by a song album called Everywhere at the End of Time, which is a musical representation of dementia and amnesia. The mod received a mass amount of attention, which obviously led to a lot of fan art. Unfortunately, some of the fan art was very distasteful and insensitive to the concept of dementia, especially when they were posted on social media under hashtag dementia. So if someone wanted to find posts about actual dementia by searching hashtag dementia, chances were that they would have to first sift through pictures of a cartoon child crying in a corner. This in turn led to people claiming that everywhere at the end of Funk was fetishizing or romanticizing dementia, which was clearly not what the creators intended. This issue was solved by the creators urging people to use hashtag everywhere at the end of funk instead of hashtag dementia when posting fan art, as well as posting a twit longer explaining their stance on dementia. Funky Friday Potential Lawsuit Funky Friday is a Roblox game where you can essentially play FNF songs against other people in a lobby. It's pretty fun. The game was created by a group called Light Interactive, but was later bought by a larger company called GameFam Studios. GameFam proceeded to add microtransactions to the game, which is already questionable seeing as this company was profiting off of a fan game that was inspired by a free open source game. However, it got worse in early December 2022, when GameFam announced a partnership with Sega and planned to integrate official Sega-approved Sonic content into Funky Friday. I don't think I need to explain why it's weird for a company as big as Sega forming a financial relationship with a Friday Night Funkin' fan game without getting any permission at all from the original FNF developers. Obviously, Ninja Muffin and Phantom Arcade were rightfully unimpressed, and even discussed speaking to lawyers about it. However, currently there has been no public legal action taken against Funky Friday. FNF Awards The FNF Awards was an informal competition hosted by a Twitter user named GlitchXPyridot. This competition essentially compiled a group of the most popular mods at the time and pitted them against each other in a tournament bracket fashion, with people voting on a Twitter poll to decide which mods stay in the bracket and which mods get eliminated, until one mod was left standing. The FNF awards was somewhat popular, but still mired by controversy, such as a lot of mod developers asking Glitch X Peridot to remove their mods from the competition because they didn't like them being compared to others. Personally, I don't like the idea of these contests because they cause a lot of people to be overly critical of how good a mod is compared to another, which can inspire very toxic behaviour and make people unable to casually enjoy mods. But thanks for blocking me on Twitter, Mr. Glitch. I'm sure that's the ideal way of handling valid criticism. Rage Miner Rage Miner is a mod developer most famous for co-creating Smoke Em Out Struggle with Atsuova. Rage Miner's ex-girlfriend, Lily, accused him of <laughs> with very little evidence or elaboration whatsoever, and she and her possibly current boyfriend, Ravens Craven, proceeded to mercilessly harass Rage Miner for answers and a confession. I think it's worth noting that Ravens Craven is known for being an attention-seeking liar, ableist, racist, and transphobe. 
He's rallying against Rage Miner, seems very suspiciously like an attempt at Rage Bait, as well as most of the evidence Raven presents being obviously faked at best. Scarily, Lily and Raven somehow got a hold of some of Rage Miner's personal information and released it on her Discord server. Rage Miner fortunately addressed the issues, as well as stating that she is pursuing legal action against her two accusers. Currently, both Lily and Raven's Twitter accounts have been deleted and I can't find any activity on any of their other social medias. Squizzle Dizzle Squizzle Dizzle was the creator of the Verse Beach Brothers mod. In early June 2021, he made a tweet where he proclaimed himself as unapologetically transphobic. A few days later, he tried to justify what he said as a joke, but very few people believed him at all, especially since he made that controversial tweet during Pride Month. A few months later, someone named Colossus ST made a Google Doc detailing further issues with Squizzle, such as frequently using racial and anti-LGBT slurs on Discord and threatening to dox two people simply because they were furries and he didn't like them. However, Carlosis later corrected themselves and explained that it was in fact another person named Lime Lazy who had framed Squizzle Dizzle for everything. In a private investigation, Carlosis discovered that Lime Lazy was actually the racist transphobe and that all of the screenshots had been faked. In fact, you can find a live stream on YouTube of Lime Lazy just going through subreddits insulting trans people. When they were doing fucking, when they were adding like stupid gay tr to it, it just f the whole dynamic of the of the subreddit it just the whole thing was f there was no coming back from it at that point because now it was just f you had all these f and f just all huddled together in this in this big like ball of just f disgusting mess furthermore the doc's threats were complete lies created by lime lazy and his friends and finally Carlosis alleges that Lime Lazy had actually blackmailed Squizzle into posting that initial transphobic tweet, keeping him quiet by threatening to leak private information. El Taco El Taco was the creator of the Crazy Girlfriend and Carol Ex-Boyfriend mod. In mid-2021, they were exposed for being very openly anti-LGBT. They had promised to make a mod called FNF vs LGTB, though it's hard to tell whether El Taco is actually anti-LGBT or if this is just an attempt at garnering attention. El Taco also created many community posts on their YouTube channel where they made jokes against gay or trans representation in games. During the early stages of the Revy controversy, El Taco also made distastefully offensive jokes about wanting to be groomed by her. Currently, all of El Taco's social media accounts have been deleted, whether by their own volition or if they were forcefully banned, I'm unsure. Fruity Dale Fruity Dale, formerly known as Cell Shader, was a musician who worked on the Doki Doki Takeover mod team. At the end of November 2022, Someone named Mega Blade posted a Google Doc exposing Fruity Dale for sexual harassment. Blade details how he got in a relationship with Lei, but soon found out that she was very inconsiderate of his personal time and made unwanted advances on him, as well as requesting sexual videos from Blade despite him being very uncomfortable with it. Lei also tried to get in relationships with other people who were already in relationships at the time. Some other people also corroborated by explaining their own experiences with Lei, causing her to apologize and leave all social media. On March of 2023, Lei returned to her Twitter account to post a thread where she apologized to everyone she hurt, but then she deleted her account again, so I don't even know what's going on. As of current, all of Lei's songs have been removed from the Doki Doki Takeover Plus expansion of the mod. Cinder Ashmaker Cinder Ashmaker was a dev who worked on mods like Verse Nian Cat. The owner of that mod, Nathan S, made a community post and subsequently a twit longer about how Cinder was a groomer and a manipulator. He details how Cinder, a 19 year old, would flirt and do erotic roleplay with minors as young as 15, as well as pressure other people, such as Nathan himself, to send her nudes. Furthermore, she has threatened suicide and faked self harm before, as well as admitting to doxing a 12 year old child. So that's pretty bad. Infinite JR Infinite JR was a voice actor for some FNF mods. In late February of 2023, he was accused by another voice actor of uploading a large quantity of NSFW art to a Discord server populated mainly by minors under 16. He was then accused by another person, Penumbra Noctis, of exploiting a 16-year-old girl he was dating named Dee. 
such as asking her to do certain sexual things on calls with him, while she was apparently having a mental breakdown. Furthermore, D claims that Infinite would jokingly use the N-word, as well as there being screenshot evidence of Infinite threatening the lives of two people, Kenny and Tia, to the point of hoping they have an abortion, being amused at the thought of them killing themselves, and being happy that one of them was doxxed. Ash Scamming People Ash was a coder who worked on a lot of different FNF mods, such as Indie Cross, Bob and Bosip, and Entity. In 2022, he was called out by many people for agreeing to help code their FNF mods, getting paid to do programming, and then slacking off and never doing any work, making constant excuses and procrastinating until the work was inevitably just done by someone else, or the mod collapsed due to his laziness. There have also been accusations that Ash was the person who leaked Hypno's Lullaby, Indie Cross, and the Bob and Bosip EX update, as well as allegations that Ash knew that Amore was problematic, but kept quiet about it for the sake of EXE update's publicity. As of this video, it has been over half a year, and Ash has not even attempted to respond to any of the allegations. Saint the Animator Saint the Animator is an animation YouTuber who makes a lot of FNF animations. In 2021, he was exposed for grooming a 12 to 13 year old while he was an adult. Saint was 29 years old, and his victim, Sophia, was 12. They knew each other's ages, but decided to be in a relationship anyway over Discord. Due to the age difference, there was a very obvious power imbalance between the two people in the relationship, with very obvious grooming tactics being put on display. After their relationship ended by Sophia's volition, Saint later stated that he's not a but for some reason he just wanted to be with her. Saint hasn't posted anything on his YouTube channel for over a year, so it's safe to say he's probably off social media for good. Ukraine vs Russia mod This one is pretty self-explanatory. Someone thought it was a good idea to make a mod where country balls of Ukraine and Russia wrapped against each other. Obviously, the mod was removed from Game Banana for being wildly inappropriate. So that's my FNF controversy iceberg. An observation I made while researching for this video is that the stream of controversies in this community has kind of slowed down recently, and I think that's really good. It's horrible that a fandom would have to deal with so much crap constantly. And I don't know if it's the fact that people are leaving, or people are getting better at hiding their transgressions, or hell, maybe it's because the community is actually maturing. But it's still just nice to see people not at each other's throats constantly. So let's keep that up, okay? As I said at the start of the video, I didn't cover absolutely everything I listed on this iceberg, but if you ask any questions in the comments, I'll try my best to answer them. Also, if I got any info wrong or didn't put a certain controversy on the iceberg, be sure to let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can fix something up. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.